Trevor, I actually have a question for the two Georges, not just for the single Georges. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, to George S., uh, as one of the people in the world who has been on the leading edge of bringing this sort of information to our species, how do you react to the fact that this science, when presented to many people, offends them? And <laughs> that's partly why I want to get the other George in on this question. Thank you. <laughs> I'll talk about it. All right, so. George. <laughs> let, let me challenge your presumption <laughs> first. That's just fine. It, it's a. Uh, uh, my early experience were, was, in general, that almost no one was offended by learning about cosmology. They were amazed and, were, and thought the Big Bang was kind of stupid, but, but the fact that there was data and observations to back it up, so they, they thought this is pretty incredible and pretty amazing, and uh, that, that was a good thing. It's actually been in more recent times that, that more, much more conservative religious groups have started getting upset about that, uh, and the same way they boycotted, you know, the, there was a IMAX movie made showing, um, you know, these incredible fishes around the hot fence in the bottom of the ocean, which are clearly very different from any other fishes on, on the earth, and clearly evolved, uh, or in their case, created to, to, to live in this unique environment, and. Uh, and so these groups organized boycotts to prevent that film from ever being shown because it was, it's too visually compelling to, to, to make that kind of argument. So it used to be that it was only sort of evolution that people were attacking, but the fact that we're learning so much about the universe and the evolving universe and that some scientists have dared to create the universe for nothing without even God, that, that, <laughs> that uh, you know, but it, it's, a, it's a trend. There, there are waves in, in religions and ideologies, that, and so we happen to be in, in one that way. And I'm always kind of surprised uh, and so forth. And so if we had a lot more time, I would talk, I would talk to you about the, the, the time I went to the Vatican for the, for, the, for the trial. And one of the things in one of the talks, I, 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 we, we had the break afterwards like that, and they, it was a scientist you know, astrophysicists, or cosmologists, and theologians, and and philosophers. Were there. So it was an interesting kind of thing. And the the philosophers, and particularly the theologians, were saying we're worried that science has bypassed us and made us irrelevant, irrelevant to to yeah. to not irreverent, but ir, ir, irrelevant to uh, whatever it was like that. And I started thinking about what it was, and I I said because clearly over time many more people have worked on theology and many more people have worked on philosophy than they have on science. And yet science has made this tremendous rise in the last hundred years, and, and, and it has to do with that. And I, and I thought, well, it's obvious one of the scriptures we study is the world, right? And nobody else does, right? They don't look at the world and use it as a source the way we do, right? I mean, if you're limited to the Bible, you're, 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 you're much more constricted to what you, where you can find new information and make progress. Whereas if you look at the world, there's plenty of new discoveries to be made. So young kids, you know, you, you can do both. I will uh, talk about this in my talk today. I don't want to put it off, so I'll say a word now. Mm -hmm. Um, at my talk today, I won't take up a second collection or anything, so don't yeah. even... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that to approach your um, question, I don't know how widespread it is. It's widespread enough, namely the following. I have a lot of close, very devout religious friends, not just Catholic, but in Christianity in general, who pray that scientists will not find answers to certain questions so that they can continue to believe in God. Now that's the, pardon me, that's the damnedest, dumbest attitude. <laughs> <laughs> but it frankly has its source and to a lot of religious people, God is a source of explanation. And she is not a source <laughs> of explanation. 
If you are a religious believer, God is a source of love. I hate to use that word, but God is a source of love. And then only secondarily. But that's, that's where the real problem is. So they feel science is a challenge to their religious belief because eventually there's going to be no, no need for God. Scientists will have the answers, and that may come. But it's, the, the fundamental thing is God is a source of explanation. Well, That's yeah. the problem. And many many me, of the great classical scientists, including Galileo, Newton, Kepler, Faraday, Maxwell, all of them thought of what they were doing as discovering how God is manifested in the world, what God is, by studying God's creation. And I think that's the right attitude. They not only did that... <laughs> they not only did that, Frank, but they also, you know, the foundings of modern science, I think it's well established, with Galileo, Leibniz, Descartes, on through Einstein up until today, but at least modern science was founded on a time when all of those scientists were religious believers, yes. as you just said. But more than that, they tried to establish their religious belief on the same rational grounds that they had established their gravity and their... I mean, Newton's, the, the god of the gaps of Newton is <laughs> well known. Yes. Let, let me just jump in. Uh, jo jo George and I are, as I was pointing out, are good friends, and and um, and, <laughs> and, uh, and and he's a very wise man. But Up but um, until today, and, and and no 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 absolutely. <laughs> Frank is wrong, but that's a different question. <laughs> but um, uh, the uh, before but, you but, start, Lord, yeah, I'd no. like to make another point, which I, I wanted to make yesterday actually, but I I wasn't alert enough. Okay. Uh, when we were talking about uh, public support of science and what we could do. Uh, one thing that I think we should confront is look, looking ourselves at, and look at ourselves in the mirror and asking uh, what we're doing wrong and how we're presenting ourselves. And I think there are two outstanding things we're doing wrong. Uh, one is uh, not presenting results honestly. When people oversell things, talk about theory of everything, uh, put forward very speculative and even dubious ideas as great discoveries. This is very destructive. It uh, undermines credibility that, we'll, that we need. And, and the other thing is being very aggressive and supporting a kind of theology that's thought of as anti-theology, but is really, it is really a theology in its own, in its own right of aggressive expansion of the domain <laughs> of science into ethics and morality where it really doesn't have uh, definitive statements to make. Well, okay, so I agree with that, um, and we'll continue that discussion after my talk. Um, uh, uh, so we, we, must not, we must not present science for anything it isn't, and, we, and the limitation of science is very important. And so we all agree, but I want to just interrupt the love fest for a moment and say um, <laughs> that, 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 that... Are you looking at me? Yeah, you know, no, no, I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> no, because what I was, I'm looking at you because you said something very sensible, which was that the friends of yours who hoped that science would, scientists wouldn't discover certain things because um, it, it would end their faith. They are, you're right, that's just the dumbest thing. But that's okay for them to be dumb. What's really, da that's not dangerous. What's dangerous is when those same people don't want their children to learn the, what we now know for fear that they'll lose their faith. And that's dangerous. Okay. Uh, no problem with that. May I get into this just one more time? <laughs> <laughs> having, having set off this gentle discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this has been, as I, I've um, commented a number of times, I've, I've spent time here at Gustavus and one of the thing, most rewarding things that has happened to me here, because this is, a, this is a university, this is an institution that has a faith-based tradition. The Lutheran Church clearly played an important role here. And um, 
in teaching a course with my good friend here, Steve, uh, a couple of years ago on this campus, uh, one of our young students at the end of the course wrote a, an essay, and he was expressing his great gratitude and joy because he finally learned that scientists were not trying to prove nor disprove the existence of God. And I think this is the most important message that we scientists must get out to society. And yeah, yeah, well, that's true. Although what science, the point is it's, what most people, Steve Weinberg, who I think has been here before and I expect will come again, a uh, Nobel Prize winning physicist has said something very important, which is that most scientists don't think enough about God to even know if they're atheists. God never enters into the discussions. And it's just irrelevant. It never, you know, in all the years I've been at a physics, physics meetings, I've never heard the word come up. And so I think most people, it, this question of what we do by, what we sometimes mislead people to think when we have these discussions, as we are now, that somehow it's a central issue that scientists are concerned about. And it isn't. They're just concerned about trying to figure out how, how the world works. As I said, neither prove nor disprove, right? Yeah. <clears throat> well, You're doing something different. I'll talk, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to hold my tongue because I want to talk a little bit about it. I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll discuss yeah. this with you then. Yeah, we'll have another uh, chance to discuss after my talk. All right, and but, we, we shall break for lunch and reconvene at 1 o'clock for Professor Krauss. <laughs>